Well, hello, everybody. This is Douglas Allen Frazier with By My Spirit. We are closing in extremely fast. We are on a glide path into the 8th of November. The big day where everybody will go and cast their vote. Now, this is being recorded for the 4th of November. The 4th of November until the 8th is a total basically of five days. 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. We take it up. We take up and we are given the opportunity to be in readiness. To be in readiness to cast our vote. I heard something last night when I was at the FMCI meeting. I shared the Federation of Minister and Churches International. Uh, the teaching was extremely good, talking about the Ecclesia from a whole greater depth than I have ever seen before. There's a book that's uh, associated with this teaching that's coming out. Uh, the author uh, was sharing it, and I'm looking forward to getting the book. But you see, one thing I gathered from it, and I'm speaking directly to Christians now, of your understanding that as the ecclesia is more than just, you know, the church. It has a greater connotation. I think I've shared this many times, and probably some of you are saying you're beating this like a dead horse, but maybe it needs to be understood that our purpose as the Ecclesia has been around a long time in the history of the church. Even before the church, as we know it today, was founded, we can go back and find the idea of the Ecclesia and how it was used, if you will, in the Old Testament. I'm not going to go into depth on that, but I want you to look at this. Our responsibility is to be managers. From the beginning, in Genesis, God said to Adam and Eve, I'm going to give you dominion. Now, there was only two people at that time. So if you look at it from the concept of the ecclesia, they were to be the managers. They were to take dominion. Well, we have been given the same responsibility. And you say, well, Doug, what does that have to do <coughs> with the elections? It has everything to do with the elections because if you are a manager or a steward, you have the responsibility for seeing or overseeing how things are being managed. If you're the manager of a corporation or a business or wherever, and you have people that are working for you. You have a mission. You have a mission statement. You have uh, things that you want to produce. And you want to do and see that you are profitable. If you don't accomplish that with the people that you've been given, you will probably be fired. You also have the responsibility for looking who you hire and fire to work with you. And let's put it this way. You can hire some people that really do not belong. And all they do is cause problems. 
And sometimes those problems can become so overwhelming that it becomes a great challenge. We are in such a time as that. We are in such a time as that. Where the problems that have come forth over quite a number of years are now to the point of where we are today. And we have, I'll just say, one selected individual being Hillary Clinton, who has a lot of bad baggage, if you will. And if you look at all the problems that she and her associates are being run up against every day, you have to say, what is wrong? You just can't make all of this stuff up. Donald Trump has had some problems in his past, but he is overcoming. He is overcoming slowly but surely. And he is willing, I think he's even more than willing, to step out and do better than he has in the past. As somebody said, Donald Trump did not have to do this. He could have stayed on the sidelines, lived a great billionaire's lifestyle, continued on with his businesses, etc. He has no experience in politics. But you know what? Nobody before they get into politics has had any experience in politics. I'll put it this way. My, my granddaughter is going to the University of Texas and is uh, taking courses in political science, etc. But she has no she has no clue when it comes to politics. She's just taking courses from professors that probably have no clue about politics other than what they've read and studied. They've never read or never run a political campaign. They've never run for an office. But let's look at something. We have got to be in readiness. And I heard this tonight from the apostle from my church, Apostle Chuck Pierce. He and Apostle Dutch Sheets are out in Las Vegas. They're making a tour around 22 different cities across the nation. It's very interesting. They are in the International Church of Las Vegas uh, the same church where Donald Trump was on this past Sunday. But Apostle Chuck made this comment. As you look at this election, who do you want to come and visit you? Are you preparing for a visitation? And who is the or what are you expecting to come and visit you? Now, I, I looked at that and, and I prayed over it, and this is what I come up with. In Luke chapter 12, there is an example given by Jesus that says this, starting in verse 35. Be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps lit. Let's start right there. Be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps lit. In other words, be ready. Somebody is going to come and visit. In 36, he says, Be like men who are waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding feast so that they may immediately open the door to him when he comes and knocks at the door. So in other words, the household has got to be ready for when their master returns. We as a nation have to be ready 
for who is going to come into the White House. We have a responsibility to make sure we are prepared to welcome that person who is going to sit in the positions of authority that are over us in this nation and has a responsibility to the nations of the world. Now let's put it this way. Do you want and are you desirous of somebody that has so many great challenges in the political platform and in her personal life of challenges that she and her husband have made for themselves. It is reported that today there are two significant investigations going on dealing with two areas of the Clintons' life. One dealing with Hillary Clinton and all her challenges of lying, her email servers and the new information that has been pulled up dealing with servers from Huma Abedin. There's another investigation that is going on in New York by the FBI looking at the Clinton Foundation. This is a historical figure. It is the only, the only person that has run for the highest office in this nation that has not one, but two FBI investigations going on. Now, are you going to prepare yourself for that person to come into your house? Is that who you want visiting, as it has been said, the White House is the people's house. Or as I talked about yesterday, are we going to build up walls of protection? Continuing on, blessed are those slaves whom the master will find on the alert when he comes. Truly, I say to you, that he will gird himself to serve and have them recline at the table and will come up and wait on them. Okay? In other words, when the master returns, he himself is going to come and serve. He is the master of the house, but his position now is to come and serve. So are we waiting for a servant, or are we waiting somebody that wants to place themselves in the area of taking over another level of power that they have sought? Now, this is where we need to be prepared. Be ready. Be ready and be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have allowed his house to be broken into. We don't know. We don't know the hour when we could be robbed. And I'm saying right now, we need to be prepared. And we need to put up all of the barriers possible so we don't see this nation robbed of its full potential. We have come too far to see the nation robbed just because the robber is wearing a dress. Now, some of you might not like it, but let's face it. All you have to do is read the examples of the Democratic platform and then look at the accusations and the indictments 
that are being brought up, the investigation that is being brought up, the two investigations, and say, do you want this type of person running the United States of America where basically for too long, at least the last eight years for sure, the United States has become the laughing stock of the world. There is no respect for what the United States has enjoyed in the past. We have given up our world leadership to other world leaders. We need to move forward and be ready for our master, as a Christian, for our master, the Son of Man, who is coming at an hour that we do not expect. But let's put it this way. He has expected his church to be ready for him, to be good and faithful stewards, to take dominion over the places that he has placed us. We are considered to be the ambassadors of heaven. We represent God as his ambassadors upon the earth. Therefore, we have not only the authority, but we have the responsibility to represent all that God is and what he expects. If it is not accepted, just as Jesus told the disciples, When they went out the first time, the twelve, he said, If the peace that I have asked you to bring into that household, the shalom, if it's not expected, take it back and leave and beat the dust off of your shoes. This is time where we have got to go. And we have got to proclaim, we have got to proclaim the goodness of God, the promises of God. We have got to restore his righteousness into the land. We have got to elect people who understand that they are not the final answer, that the final answer comes not from government, but from the King of kings and the Lord of lords, from God Almighty, who has established the kingdoms and principalities and nations of the world. He is the one, the sovereign over all of these things. This might be a little bit rambling, but just think about your responsibility if you have not voted yet. Are you taking the responsibility for preparing yourself, your family, your community, and this nation for what God himself wants to see restored? Prepare for your visitation. Build up the walls that need to be built up for protection and tear down all of the illegitimate walls so that the things behind the illegitimate walls can be seen and disclosed and the illegitimacy taken away, exposed, and the evil that might be there, may it come to justice and be judged according to to the laws of God and God himself alone. As you hear me speak concerning 
Hillary Clinton. I am not judging her. I am stating facts that are known at this time. And as we have already prayed previously in several of these episodes, we have asked and we have declared that the light of God would come and expose those things that need to be exposed. And I just say, thank you, Lord, for answering prayers. May it be so. And may the blinders, may the blindness of those that cannot see the deception, may that be removed and may they see the truth. May they speak the truth. May they walk in the truth. And may they thank God for the truth that he has provided them with that they might make a very good and intelligent decision as they have prayed over and sought out the wisdom and discernment of God. So right now, Father, I say, we are waiting with great anticipation for you to come, for you to come in your time and in your place. But Lord, until you do come, let us be prepared. Let us make sure that all of the rooms are swept clean. That all of the preparation for the household is completed. That we keep away any who would try to come in to rob, who would come in and even try to destroy what you have provided. So, Lord, let us be your good servants. Let us be the managers of your household. Let us be the ambassadors that know how to speak, that are willing to stand up Let us be those that would stand upon the wall and watch and give warning of those things, of those people, of those ideas that would come against the laws and commands of God, that would come against his goodness and your mercy, Lord. Lord, prepare us for your visitation. Prepare us to support you just as your laws are done in heaven, let us call out and say, bring your law upon the earth. Bring your goodness and your mercy. Give us the direction. Build up leaders who have a desire to follow after you, who have a desire to break down the illegitimate barriers that have blocked the church from growing, that would block the ecclesia from doing its job, who would block the ecclesia from speaking. Lord, give us a voice once again, and let us not be fearful. Let us not be fearful to use that voice, that we would speak into this land, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to share. Lord, I am the least of the least when it comes to preparing or sharing a message. But I know that there are those that listen to these messages. It has an impact. And let it only be for your honor and for your glory. I thank you for it all now. I pray a blessing upon each of those that would listen and those that would share this with others, that they would be blessed and that they would walk according to the direction that you would have them walk. They would take the stand that you have asked them to take, that they would prepare to stand and fight the good fight. I thank you for it all now. In Jesus' name.
And I will look forward to seeing you again on By My Spirit. Be blessed and get ready to see the hand of God move in a great and mighty way as we have prayed, asked for forgiveness, and we will see a newness and a freshness that God will bring into this land, the United States of America. 